there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm an artist who has a big palette. You don't need a big palette necessarily for Bible journaling, and Daniel Smith has these little palettes, and I want to talk a little bit about what they are and how they might be helpful for you. This one is called the Sketcher Palette, and it's the one I would recommend probably for most people. It has yellow, red, and blue in kind of a bright color, and a more muted yellow, red, and blue. And it only has those six colors. The rest of them I filled in myself, but I did this whole painting just from the six that it came with. So you can get a lot of use out of it once you start to learn how to mix colors. And I'm going to be talking mostly about that in this video. The other colors that I've put in here are specifically because I plan to use this palette for a specific use. And that's when I go out to paint in a city. I put building colors and stone colors and sidewalk colors in here with textures in them so that I will have those as options for me but you can put whatever colors you want to add to them. Now, in the Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook, there is a whole, there's a bunch of different chapters and you may notice they coincide generally with the regular book, the book with tutorials. But on page 52 is a color wheel and I'm gonna show you how to make yourself a color wheel. You're gonna take your yellow, red, and blue and it doesn't matter which yellow, red, and blue as long as you're consistent in the color wheel because you're trying to figure out what your yellow, red, and blue do. And in this particular instance, it's going to be the three yellow, red, and blue that come in this set. Remember, the, the ones around the outside edges don't come with it, just those six in the kind of bottom center. So I'm just going to paint a little bit of yellow, red, and blue in those three spots that are already marked with the colors on them. And now I need to make one that's 50-50, half of the yellow and half of the red that will make an orange. And in between, I'm just rinsing my brush so I don't dip paint from one color into the other. And if I mix it about 50-50, then I'll end up with a kind of medium orange. And that's the idea of a color wheel is to see what color is mixed to turn into what. So halfway between, I'm going to put an orange, orange section on my color wheel. And I'm going to do the same thing with yellow and blue to make a middle green. And you may need to go back and forth and add it. If you add too much blue, add a little bit more yellow so that you try to get it about 50-50 mix. It's not possible to give you an, a recipe and say dip it this many times because it's going to be different every time. But this, it's a good challenge to try it. Now here I started mixing my pink and I accidentally touched the green. So I'm going to start fresh with a new section of pink because that red and green is going to make brown eventually. So I don't want to, I don't want to mess with that when I'm trying to get pure colors for my color wheel. So I mixed what I thought was a, a fairly good 50-50 mix of the red and the blue to make a purple. Now I'm heat setting this and I don't heat set in my Bible because this does extra wrinkling. But I was in a hurry. I was trying to shoot this video and get it done. And I thought it'd be a chance to talk about heat setting. If I do any heat setting, and sometimes I'll do just a little spot of something, I lift the page up because I don't want to heat the whole book because it'll warp the whole book and you'll end up with more wrinkles, like, you know, big kind of waves in it. So at least I'm only wrecking one page. The other thing I did too here in a couple spots was I held my, my heat gun too close to it and I burned the page a little bit. So I don't do it in my Bible because I don't even want to risk burning my page. But I also wanted everything dry before I moved on to this next section because I need to put a, a yellow orange in between the yellow and the orange. So it needs to be more orange than the yellow and more yellow than the orange. So you want something that's kind of in between. And this is just good practice at mixing colors. So now I'm going to try to mix one that's halfway between the orange and the red. So it's going to be more of a, like a rose red, like the, the flower, the rose, a red rose, than it is a pink rose because the, the red in this particular color wheel is more of a pinkish color. I'll do the same thing with the greens, going for a yellow green in between the green and the yellow. And then I do a blue green in between the blue and the green. And it's a good exercise to do with a lot of different colors. And there's only one color wheel in the book, but I'll show you in a minute how you can do a quick color wheel for yourself that doesn't require having this whole page. But 
I like having a color wheel to practice on, to see what kind of blue and purple or, or what kind of purple is going to be made by this particular blue and this particular red, because they'll make colors with different characters to them. And sometimes you'll come out with a color and you'll, you'll look at your wheel and you're like, you know, I didn't mix that all that great, so I need to add more color to it. You can certainly do that. And this is a workbook, so don't expect perfection. Don't work. I don't work for perfection on something like this myself, because that is that's just like more work than I find is making sense to me. Because it's a workbook. It's just an exercise to practice. So I've ironed it all out nicely now. And you can see my little burn marks where I dried things and dried them a little too close. Once it's for sure dried, then I iron sometimes on top of it, but I don't want to iron on top of it when it's wet and get paint all over my iron and then have to clean it. So now I'm going to write the actual colors that I used in this color wheel so I could remember what they are later on. Because if you have several brands, you won't want to assume that one is going to make a particular kind of a color and another is not. And then I wrote down the brand of color and also that it's the Sketcher palette. So you can make a real quick color wheel for yourself as well. And this you can do, I'm doing it on watercolor paper, but you can do it even just on cardstock because you're just making little dots of color and don't worry about the edges and things. You're just looking to see if you can mix a little dot of the yellow and then add different amounts of red to it. You're making little dots of yellow and adding different amounts of blue to it and you're mixing on the paper rather than mixing on a palette. So you can do it both ways. In my Bible, I often mix just on the paper. I don't bother mixing color on a palette. That's why I glue my my little swatch card into the mixing area on this palette because I don't really use it anyway. It also has an area where all the paint would slide down into the crack. So it's not really meant to be a palette that's going to have like major mixing well type of area in it. So in addition to the red, yellow, and blue at the top of the six that they give you, I'm going to try this with the muted colors as well and just see what happens. And this is a great way to just make a whole bunch of these with different colors. Make sure you label them so you remember later on, if you say these little swatches, <laughs> what colors you had used and what colors they make. Because this is going to tell you a lot when you're trying to mix a color and make it look like a particular thing. But on my main channel is a whole long video. I just did an epic video just recently that I will link at the end of this one. So you can see a whole lot more about all the other palettes. They have a lot of these little, little tiny palettes now from Daniel Smith, and they all have six colors in them, except one is completely full. So if you want a palette that's already full, you can grab that one. And there you go. So here's mixing colors by mixing them on a palette. And, and I say palette, but this is a little piece of tile that I got at the hardware store for like 89 cents. So didn't get crazy with it. Mixing different amounts of yellow and blue in it. And these, this is the bright yellow and the bright blue. Well, what happens if I take that yellow and I mix it with the other blue that's provided? Look at the different kind of green I get just because I used a different blue. And even though that, you know, you would think the bright colors are meant to be used together and the muted ones are meant to be used together. You can use anything together with anything. Added more yellow and it makes a brighter green, brighter, happier, lighter green. But it's just those six colors that come in this palette. And the rest of the colors are ones that I added. I would recommend that you just use those six for a while and get used to adding what you need as you start learning how to mix colors more. Just the other day, I mentioned about the 40 Days of Prayer, the free class that's available soon over at art-classes.com. And this is the booklet that my church has printed. There's a differently formatted one that you could download if you want to just follow a, a downloadable handout and pray from that. But each one of them has a prayer prompt and it has several scriptures, that sort of thing. And in my class, quote unquote class, there's worship songs, there's a, a drawing, one of my drawings that you can use in some way to trace into your Bible and use as art, or just read about my inspiration, how I got to that image from that particular prompt or from one of the scriptures. 
but I invite you to join us in the 40 days if you're interested in that. If you start on the same day that we start on January 2nd, then you'll end on the same 40th day that we do, but you can start this anytime. Your first day will be the day that you sign up. Your second day will be the next day, and each lesson will be revealed to you on the following day. You'll just have to keep going back to the site to, to get the next lesson. So that's about it for today. I hope that this was helpful information for you in general, and I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, be blessed, and I will see you in the new year.